I think he's just trying to, to change the narrative a little bit. Of course, he knows that people that are part of his base are up in arms about this, and uh, they they naturally going to be uh, upset and thinking that this is all about the, the deep state. But for those people that are a little bit undecided and wondering, did he do something wrong? I mean, it's been reported he's taken over 300 documents, 150 of those highly classified uh, he's trying to, to, to shake things up a bit and, and say, actually, I didn't do anything wrong here. He was saying that he was fully cooperative, that the FBI visited in June even, uh, and that this is highly politicized and therefore he needs the appointment of a special master. Now, this, this is something that's happened before in, in criminal cases, but it really is about you know things that have to do with attorney-client privilege. Um, but he's saying that he needs this because the Department of Justice is completely biased against him. So he's trying to shape the court of public opinion a bit here. Do you think, though, it'll also succeed in stalling the case? Yeah, I mean, that could be also important because he wants to very quickly announce that he's running for, for president. Uh, he's going to do it probably even before the midterms uh, because he knows that there's some possible competition. Uh, and, and that, you know, it's not a, a lock until he announces it. Then that's going to make it, of course, a lot more difficult for his competition to go after him. Um, but he's trying to get ahead of everything here. And it might be important to stall things because he actually has a lot of legal liabilities with this with this case of stealing the, these documents here, you know, things like obstruction of justice uh, and, and violating the National Archives. Uh, so I think he's just trying to pursue all kinds of legal maneuvers that are at his disposal to ensure that he can run in 2024. Yeah, and he's so well known for sort of using legal maneuvers to delay um, things. Uh, you know, the, the raid, though, has a, seemingly given him quite a bump in support where many in the Republican Party had felt that, although, yes, he still held sway, perhaps they were keeping him at bay. Yeah, and it is it is interesting because I think it plays into the fears that he and 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 Steve Bannon have talked about. There's that there's this horrible deep state that's trying to infringe on people's rights, and he's really attracted uh, a group of Americans that are just anti-institutions, anti-state, anti-elections. They don't believe in elections anymore. They don't believe in the administrative institutions. They don't believe in the security institutions. I mean, he's really gone to war with the intelligence agencies, but particularly the FBI. And this is something that most Republicans never would have done. I mean, the, the Republicans and the FBI had always been, you know, pretty supportive of one another. Uh, so this is a really interesting turn in American politics, how he's been able to, to go after the FBI and he's gained support for doing so. Yeah. You know, and many of his backed candidates have won pre-selection, as we would understand it, for the midterms. Um, is this disrupting the Republican strategy, really just trying to keep focused on the, Democrat, the Democrats and what they're failing to do at the moment? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, the Trump-supported candidates, 180, won their uh, primaries out of 200. And so he really has a firm grip of the Republican Party. But to win in elections, you, you have to attract independents, you have to attract moderates. And, and I actually think the Republicans are going to do pretty well in the midterms unless the Democrats are able to continue the momentum that they've been achieving in the past couple weeks and, and months. Uh, I think they're still going to do well. But what is a bigger problem for Trump is that he isn't appealing to a large enough base of people in 2024 to win. He just keeps getting involved in way too many lawsuits. He's considered to be highly crooked. In fact, he may end up in prison before he even has a chance to run. So the Republicans have decided to put all their eggs in Trump's basket. But I think that's actually very dangerous because they know they can't really win with him unless they decide to undermine the electoral institutions. Yeah. And, you know, uh, do you think Liz Cheney would be a distraction or do you think in many ways she, she sort of disrupts the Republican vote should she run as an independent? She would disrupt the Republican vote just, I mean, uh, not very much. It would be really these old Republicans who are never Trumpers, uh, who are really big supporter of, of Dick Cheney, her father, 
Uh, and this percentage of the Republicans, it, it's very small. And we saw that she got absolutely trounced in that primary uh, by over 30 points. Two years ago, she won by that same margin. She is really, really unpopular in the Republican Party. She's enemy number one for Trump. I think she's going to find it difficult to get much of a base behind her, behind maybe a few independents uh, and old school Republicans, as I said, be because she is just so reviled because Trump goes after her all the time. Yeah. It just never, never stops to be a fascinating political situation. Good to talk, Natasha. Nice to talk to you too.